Here's one for all you endurance athletes. It turns out that short intervals induce superior training adaptation compared with long intervals in cyclists. Yes, you heard it right. A study conducted by Ronestad and his team has shed some fascinating insights on this. Imagine 20 male competitive cyclists, average age 33, training anywhere between 8 to 10 hours a week. Their mean VO2 max, a measure of aerobic fitness, was roughly 66 milliliters per kilogram per minute. These cyclists were divided into two groups, one training with long intervals and the other with short intervals. For 10 weeks, these two groups trained twice weekly, incorporating high-intensity interval sessions interspersed with low-intensity training. The long interval group followed a traditional four times five minute interval with two and a half minutes recovery periods in between. The short interval group, on the other hand, performed 30 second intervals separated by 15 second recovery periods. This sequence was repeated 13 times before a three minute recovery period took place. This cycle was completed three times, totaling 39 30 second intervals. So how did they fare? Before and after these 10 weeks, the cyclists underwent a series of tests, blood lactate profile, VO2 max, a Wingate test, and a 5-minute and a 40-minute all-out time trial. Interestingly, the mean power of interval sessions rose by 9% in the short interval group, compared to a modest 2% change in the long interval group. However, the rate of perceived exertion was similar in both groups, indicating that both interval formats were perceived as equally tough. But here's where the real magic happens. In this setting, the 30-second short interval format outperformed the traditional four times five-minute session across all performance parameters. After 10 weeks, VO2 max increased by 8.7% in the short interval group, while the long interval group only improved by 2.6%. Power output at a blood lactate concentration of four millimoles per liter often used as an estimate of lactate threshold, increased by 12% in the short interval group, compared to a 5% improvement in the long interval group. For the 40-minute all-out trial, mean power improved by 12% and 4% in the short and long interval groups, respectively. It's worth noting that the four times four-minute interval training is one of the most commonly researched types of interval training. But even so, the 30-second short interval beat this traditional format hands down. This is a powerful testament to the potency of high-intensity short intervals. Power over 30-second max effort, 5-minute all-out, 40-minute all-out, and at approximate lactate threshold all improved with the short interval format. Ever wondered why 30 15 intervals seem to outperform 4x5? Let's dive into the science behind it. The study we're looking at had both interval formats with a comparable duration of interval work. The short and long interval sessions had a total high-intensity work duration of 19.5 and 20 minutes, respectively. The first thing we should consider is the two, one work to recovery ratio and long duration of each series. This allows for large cardiovascular stress. According to Ronestad et al., the 3015 format allows for more training time above 90% of VO2 max, and thus a greater training stimulus. Moving on, find that time spent at high intensity has an additive effect on muscular adaptation, potentially contributing to a larger training stimulus compared to the 4x5 protocol. The shorter intervals might involve a higher power output that can't be sustained for five minutes of consecutive work. Lastly, we need to consider the short interval format. This may result in higher lactate concentration throughout the session, potentially explaining the superior adaptation. Although both groups had similar lactate values after the sessions, the short interval format might have allowed a higher concentration of lactate throughout. So it's not just about the duration, but the intensity and the way you train that makes the difference. Stay tuned for the key takeaways. All right, let's take a breather and summarize what we've learned. Initially, the study reports an impressive increase in performance for well-trained cyclists who used high-intensity short intervals, specifically a 30-15 second work and recovery format. This format was shown to be more effective than the traditional 4x 5-minute interval with performance enhancement observed across both high and low power outputs. However, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It would be hasty 
to declare the 3015 session as the ultimate interval solution for every rider. More accurately, this short, high-intensity interval method could be seen as a potential way to vary training stimuli and enhance endurance capacity. We still have a long way to go in fully understanding how to best implement different types of interval training. Nevertheless, the 3015th short interval could be a valuable addition to your high-intensity workout repertoire. That's a wrap, folks. Remember, it's not just about the duration, but the intensity and the way you train that makes the difference. Keep pedaling, keep exploring, and see you in the next video.